Hi, how's it doing? It's the Barca Boy here, and today I've got another match review. Our last League 2 away game of the season, which ended in weird circumstances with a 3 1 victory over Leighton Orient. So like I said in the intro, and as many of you probably already know, this game didn't end in your usual game. Uh, it finished near enough at 7 o'clock now. Let's just talk about the match first and then I'll get into the protest later on in this match review. But it was a scrappy match. I think we went in with the mentality looking at it that we can have total domination of possession. If we just keep having shots, one or two of them are going to go in. You know, that's how it was, and they almost you know, got a couple for us. But we were the dominant side. You can tell later on they're a side that have been relegating. They're full of youth team players that aren't on their best morale. And they aren't fully experienced. But, no, we managed to take a one-goal lead, and that sort of settled the nerves for a bit. I mean, it was a great cross by Eastman, who was in the, a position I didn't expect him to be in. But an, a good header by Fosu, who didn't have a bad game today. He's slowly starting to prove... He's not living up to that expectation that I think most fans thought he'd bring, but he's slowly starting to build his way back into the team. I think it's a bit of confidence there. And it was a good header at the back post. And when at half-time, 1-0, we just had to go into the second half thinking, can we get one or two more just to kill this game off now? Came back out, we looked very lively, more energetic. We had even more shots in the first half. And I thought, well, we're going to get one in a minute and that'll be game over. Unfortunately, that's not how it went. As much as you know, a cracking goal by their Portuguese winger slash central midfielder, uh, Smenda, I think, I don't know, Semedo, I think that's how you pronounce it, but, I mean, well-deserved that was. I mean, that was cracking. They were, they pushed us a couple of times, but no keeper stopping that. And, you know, it's a fitting tribute to their last home, professional home game. And I think, what a goal to go out on. But, of course, we couldn't let that get us down, uh, we started the game again from kickoff. Didn't look that too damn beat about it. They had a couple more chances, but we eventually made the breakthrough after making a couple of changes and tweets. I think Bond, massive impact on the bench. Why has it taken so long for McGrill to finally figure out or playing him? I do not know why, but made an impact as soon as he came with Porter up top. Maybe that sh should be the two that start front against Yeovil. Definitely look more energetic and sort of remind me of the Porter and Guthrie combination. But, you know, Porter got the goal, you know, any goal will do and wasn't your pretty goal, it's probably the worst goal we've conceded this year but it's conceded we've scored this year but it's they count and it just settled in we were fun I think that's when the Leighton Orient fans players all the heads dropped and three minutes later Bond pops up again a very smart finish from him to make it 3-1 and that effectively killed the game off and then the game literally did get killed off um Leighton Orient fans of course protesting against Braschetti their owner um Fair play to them, at least they're taking action against an owner. Of course, we had our mini protests after the after the, the late Norwich game last year, in fact. But they did it, and it, you know, I can see why they did it, but did they have to do it for so long? I don't know. It sort of killed the game for us, and we could have easily got one or two, I reckon, because it did stop in the 85th minute. So it's about 10 minutes to play if you include normal time plus injury time. And it sort of ruined it for us. I mean, 30 minutes, yeah. But it's, it's like they went out there with the intent that we want to get it abandoned. We're laying on We don't care about Colchester. There's nothing to play for when there's actually a lot to play for us. I mean, we, I think we could have got another goal and that could have, that would have put above uh, Cambridge. So it's very strange and I do feel a little bit downbeat about it. And I, I'd love to know what laying on fans think. Because if you look on Twitter and everything, it's all about laying on Nothing about Colchester United, you know. <laughs> And it's a bit weird that clubs are joining later on, but what about us? I know, I know it sounds a bit bitter, but it's true. We could have easily got another one. And I think it's just a shame that it got spilled that way. And then if you look at the last, uh, I think it would have been eight minutes, it was shocking. And it's just a shame that our season, it might depend on this result. But I know there's been loads of other results that haven't gone our way, but this one could be the major one. But you never know, but it's a winner win, we need to win and we got that winner, very uh, comfortable win in the end. And it does take us within two points, is it two? yeah, two points of the playoffs. All to play for against Yeovil, let's go out there, let's get our result, 
If results go away, brilliant. But for now, let's just focus on beating the Oval. If we win and other teams win, then fair enough. We didn't do it, but you never know. If you did enjoy this match review, please leave a like. Please subscribe. If there's any late Norwich fans, I know there will be. Please leave a like. Please comment what you made of the protest. Oh, I'd love to hear your opinions on the protest. That's the main bit for me. And I will see you tomorrow for another interesting video.